So um, we are ever so pleased, you know, to uh, welcome you to the very first event of the online workshop series, Open Borders for Adivasi and Dalit Literature and Performing Arts. My name is Nicole Thiara, for those of you who don't know me. I am the co-director of the Post-Colonial Studies Centre here at Nottingham Trent University, and I am one of the conveners of the research network Writing, Analyzing, Translating Dalit Literature, which I started with Judith Misrahi Barak in 2014. The study of Dalit literature had very little visibility at the time in Europe, and we therefore created this research network and hosted six conferences in the UK, in France, and in India between 2014 and 2016, which was a wonderful and, and very enriching experience. And you know, that's why we wanted, we knew that we wanted to continue. So we were fortunate enough to get some follow on funding from the HRC to coordinate, to co-organize events that celebrated Dalit and Adivasi literature and performing arts more widely. And we had just completed the first series of events in Paris when Europe was hit by the first wave of the pandemic in March. So we therefore had to postpone the remaining events and we hope that we can hold them next year instead. This series of online seminars and workshops seeks to continue our work in the only form that seems currently possible, namely online. And we are so very, very grateful to the writers and performers Raju Das and Namita Das, and uh, also, of course, their translator and the moderator, Dr. Runa Chakraborty Pangskis, for launching this particular series. The title of today's event is Breaking Barriers, a conversation with two Bengali Dalit writers, and I think we are in for a treat. I personally really cannot wait. Now, therefore, want to keep this very brief, but I also just want to thank my co-conveners of today's events, Marina Rimsha from the India Indonesia Programme at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and of course, Yutmis Rahi Barak from the Research Centre Emma at the University Paul Valéry in Montpellier 3, who is going to say a few words next. Well, just just a few words. I mean, it's a great pleasure to be uh, to be online with you. And of course, the the irony uh, is not lost on us because in the in our attempts, in fact, to keep the the network uh, alive and to keep in touch. I mean, literally, politically, in all meanings of the of the words, we ended up with those you know out of touch <laughs> seminar. I mean, those uh, digital uh, medium. But still, I mean, being able to connect with a lot of people uh, across across the world, I mean, literally, uh, Israel, India, France, Germany, yes. Lithuania, uh, the UK, and uh, and so on, probably the US as well. So it's a great uh, it's a great pleasure. So uh, this is indeed the first webinar, the first um, I don't want to call it a seminar. I mean, it truly started as a conversation. And in fact, the origin, I mean, it all started from um, a conversation with Marina, who was hosting for her university and her research center. She was hosting online. It was a, a seminar online. Uh, the writer, Ajay Navaria, who had also come to our um, events, I mean, the first time when we got the HRC funding. And so out of that conversation, uh, Marina suggested that we should develop, in fact, the idea of those uh, webinars and seminars online. And so it's once again, I mean, I'm convinced that, you know, some of the, the most interesting events happen out of conversations uh, with people and, and with, you know, the interaction and the friendship, of course. Uh, and so this is how the, the format came about in our conversations. And uh, if you want to have a look at the, at the three different formats of, the, of those webinars, you can definitely have a look at the, uh, at the website. So it's, go it's truly going to be, you know, conversations. It's not papers. It's not, um, you know, it's not that format, but truly a conversation. So I'm really delighted. And uh, Marina... Um, Please introduce our guests. <clears throat> Very shortly, I will also introduce myself. Hi, I'm so pleased to see you all here. Um, I have been a student of Hindi Dalit literature for many years now, and today I teach Hindi at the India Indonesia program at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, which is something I've been doing for quite some years also. And I'm also finishing my PhD on, at the University of Bonn in Germany with the subject narrative strategies in Hindi Dalit autobiographies. 
So Julius has already mentioned how my involvement with this webinar came about. So the only thing that is left for me to do is to ask you to please mute your microphones and keep them muted during the performance and Runa's introduction. And I will introduce Runa and we will start. So Runa Chakraborty Ponskis, I'm sorry, I hope I'm saying it right, <laughs> is currently teaching at the Faculty of Social Sciences, Arts and Humanities in Kaunas University of Technology, Lithuania. Her research areas include Dalit literature, gender and media studies. Her scholarly writings have been published in several peer reviewed journals and edited volumes. Runa is also a creative writer herself and a translator. Her translated stories have been published by the Orient Black Swan and Saitya Academy, New Delhi, India. Runa, welcome and please take it from here. Thank you very much. Um, actually, it's such a pleasure to see all of you here. And it's a very um, good opportunity for us to talk about issues which we otherwise don't have any opportunity to talk about. So uh, very briefly, I'll first give you the gist of the play, which is uh, going to be performed by Raju Das and Namita Das. And then I'll give an introduction um, of Raju Das and Namita Das. Uh, the title of the play is Shopne uh, Fediwala. It's written in Bengali. The translation would be The Deliverer of Dreams. Why this I can discuss uh, when we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, this, according to the, the playwrights, can be enacted as a stage play or as a street play. And the time and location of the play is present day West Bengal. So the play, The Deliverer of Dreams, tells us about the daily struggles of a not so well-to-do Bengali Dalit family. It tells the story of Rajan Mondol and his wife, Rama Mondol. Rajan, who works as a night watchman in a government office, pulls rickshaw during the day since the meager salary that he receives from his so-called government job is hardly sufficient to make ends meet. In addition, Rajan and Roma run a tea stall because feeding a big family requires a considerable amount of money. However, the play is not just about economic <laughs> deprivation and desperation. It is more than that. In fact, its greater purpose is revealed through its title. In spite of terrible poverty, Rajan dedicates himself to the task of disseminating Ambedkarite principles among others. Every month, he uses a large part of his salary to buy Dalit books. Although these books are supposed to be sold, most of the time they are given away for free since Rajan's actual intention is to spread awareness about Dalit rights. The play intends to strike at the core of a complacent hypocritical society that has forgotten the true meaning of the principles taught by Gautam Buddha and Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. It exposes not only the fakeness of apparently progressive high caste Bengali Bhadrulogs, but also the double standards of a group of educated Dalit middle class who try to maintain a quote unquote safe distance from people like Rajan. What is interesting about this play is that it shows its ability to examine caste and gender relations with a nuanced critical eye. Rajan, who is depicted as a sincere follower of Ambedkarite principles, turns out to be an egoist patriarchal husband. Rama makes him realize this truth and the play ends with the couple saluting to the immortal idols of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar as well as the unifying spirit of India. Now, before I read out an excerpt from this play, I would like to introduce these two writers from Bengal. Raju Das, who is a prolific writer of Bengali Dalit plays and short stories, was born on 11 April 1953 at a village called Ramnagar in Dhaka district in East Pakistan, now which is in Bangladesh. His elder brother, Parish Chandra Das, who was his inspiration, enabled him to develop a revolutionary consciousness. Poverty has been a constant threat uh, to Raju Das, but it hasn't been able to impair his creative literary mind. He had to pull rickshaw for earning extra money for his family. 
But that struggle didn't stop him from publishing literary magazines such as Nobarun and Nobarupa without any external financial help. In 1977, he founded his drama group, Shanti Kunjo Natuke Dol, which has been performing Dalit plays since then. Another drama group, Shanti Kunjo Blind Natya Academy, which he established in 2009, is a unique venture as it consists of 21 visually challenged members who are actively performing on a regular basis. All the publishing houses never queued up in front of Rajadas's house, yet he has so far managed to publish 85 plays, 43 short stories, and an autobiography. Besides, there are 35 teledramas and two documentaries which are available on YouTube. Through his writings, Rajudas wishes to explore a new world which is free from fear, lies, and arrogance. Now about Namita Das, she was born on 15th February, 1955 at Hijal Pukuria refugee colony in Habra, West Bengal, India. Her her father, Nokul Roy, a blacksmith by profession, came to India after the partition and opened his makeshift shop near the rail tracks in Habra. Poverty was a constant threat to them. When Nomita was in the seventh standard, she started earning for her family by stitching ready-made clothes. However, no constraint could smother her acting skill, which was further honed by watching plays. Although she had opportunity to be a professional actor in folk theater groups, which in Bengali is called Jatra, she declined the offer since her father was not comfortable with the idea that his daughter would take up acting as a profession. Nevertheless, her passion for acting grew stronger after her marriage with Raju Das. Since their marriage in 1977, the couple has been performing together in plays organized within and outside Kolkata. Namita Das also wrote poems, short stories, and plays. She has till now published 10 poems, five short stories, and three anthologies of plays. Well, um, quickly, I'll read out a section from the play which they are going to perform. And uh, this section begins after Rajan and Rama, these two uh, characters in the play, had a heated argument about Rajan's a uh, mission to spread awareness about Dalit rights among people. And uh, Rama is very irritated because uh, Rajan is so obsessed with this mission that he often forgets about his own domestic duties. So this is the point where Rama is very irritated. So she is saying, oh, only lectures and lectures. Do you know our second daughter has been lying sick with fever for last few days? What a hell my life is. I went to Mrs. Chaudhuri to borrow 50 rupees, but even that was denied. What am I supposed to cook for lunch today? I have absolutely no clue. Rajan, what? You didn't tell me any of these things. Rama, as if telling you earlier would have made any difference. Look at you. You are now all set to go out for bringing emancipation for Dalits. Rajan, okay. I'm going to get some medicine from Dr. Shamul Bala right away. I'll also borrow some money from him so that I can get some food from the market. And he prepares to go. Rama, no one will lend you money anymore. Everyone runs away from you. They fear that you are going to sell your Dalit books to them. Why do you get yourself involved in such unprofitable activity? I really don't get it. Rajan, you don't have to. Just give me my bag that has books in it. Also give me that photograph of Dr. Ambedkar, the one that I bought for Mr. Biswas. Rama, ah, day and night, always, only Ambedkar and Ambedkar. Who is Ambedkar? Is he your father? Rajan, not just mine. He is the father of the entire Dalit community. Rama, throwing the photograph of Ambedkar. Here, take your father with you. Rajan, what? What have you done? You threw the photograph of Baba Sahib? If you wish to beat me up, please do it. I'll bear that pain. But, Rama, yes, I have thrown it and I haven't done any wrong. That Ambedkar has made my husband crazy. He has destroyed my family. I hate him. And she cries. Rajan, what did you just say? 
You hate Dr. Ambedkar, the father of Dalit community? Yes, 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 I hate him. Shut up, or else I'll beat you up with the stick. Rama, come, beat me up. I'll still say Ambedkar is my enemy. He is my co-wife. Rajan, how dare you? Where is the stick? Where is it? Now Rama laughing loudly. Ha ha ha, there, see how Baba Sahib Ambedkar is laughing at you, at a misogynist like you. He must be wondering whether he had written about women's emancipation for people like you. He resigned from the cabinet because he could not succeed in having the Hindu code bill passed through the parliament. I'm sure he is now thinking whether he did that to see this outcome. What happened? Why have you stopped short after hearing this? Why is that stick in your hand going down now? Beat me up, come, beat me up. Rajan, please, please be quiet. I've made a grave mistake. Rama, men like you know only one thing, how to bully women. Rajan, forgive me, Rama. I'll never even intend to beat you up. Rama smiling. Okay, touch this photograph of Ambedkar and promise that you will respect all women. Rajan, I promise. Both love. Rama, now let's say together, hail to the father of Dalit community, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Hail to the motherland. And the play ends here. Mm -hmm.